Crowdfunding is a tricky concept. By a very loose definition, the practice of crowdfunding has existed since the 1700s, but more recently, with the creation of a site called Kickstarter, it not only became wildly popular, but also far more accessible. Before Kickstarter, sites like Indiegogo or Artist Share did exist, which essentially conformed to the modern definition of what crowdfunding is, but Kickstarter really poured jet fuel on the concept and turned it into what we now see all around us. It's an interesting social phenomenon. I'll admit that in the past, I tried it out. I had a couple of ideas and thought to myself, hey, that's a great idea, I should do it. The easiest method to pursue rather than create a complex pitch, finesse investors, or develop insider connections with months or even years of intense labor was just throw it up on Kickstarter. The thing is, I didn't really have the details of my plan worked out. I didn't have accompanying research, or at least not enough of it, that is. Didn't have a team in place ready to go, or frankly, any of the necessary infrastructure to execute the ideas should they be successfully funded. Not to worry though, they were not funded. In fact, very few people supported them at all, which is actually a very good thing when thinking about it now. Another reason why the half-assed ideas I had attempted to crowdfund didn't go anywhere was because I had not marketed them. I was trying to raise relatively large sums of money from nothing, which is a monumental task, and the old phrase, you need to have money to make money, exists for a reason. Had I saved a few thousand dollars to pour into high-yield marketing or advertising campaigns, even with the rudimentary framework of an almost non-existent idea, I would have probably been able to find some people out there interested in the concept and willing to hand over some of their cash. We see things like this everywhere now. I basically get spammed on Facebook with birthday crowdfunded charity events or messages about new crowdfunding video games that will change everything and be a better alternative with help from the people. And some of these ideas are good or legitimate, but when large amounts of money are being passed around based on what might be someday with little to no true accountability or assurances, you will inevitably find a large number of applicants or projects that are just like I was, ill-prepared, not entirely committed, or worse yet, willfully misled leading even negligent. At the time when I experimented with Kickstarter, I had every intention of attempting to execute the projects, but I was not prepared to do so in a truly responsible way. And rather than assume that some of the projects I will talk about today are actual fraud, I will try to remember that an easy possible alternative is that they simply overpromised without any real understanding of what they were committing to, or how to do it. And thus, the end result, if it even ever exists, will be woefully inadequate when compared to what was advertised. The best example and the primary reason why I'm making this video is Star Citizen. Star Citizen is the biggest crowdfunded project ever, to my knowledge. A galactic video game on a cosmic scale. And in theory, it seems amazing. Over a million fans during a span of what is now approaching seven years pledged and paid almost $300 million to bring the idea to life. And while there is certainly work being done and progress being made, it is not on a track that would see it releasing with any sort of legitimate viability for many more years to come. The biggest issue, though, is that the game's development team is not sitting on a topped-up bank account, ready and waiting to hit the grindstone. The funds have been largely wiped out, and there is very little to show for it. Since the game's proposed release date back in 2014, two years after its first round of funding on Kickstarter, which raised about $2 million, it has been delayed numerous times. During these delays, the marketing has not slowed down. Quite the opposite, in fact. The marketing has skyrocketed into the stratosphere with new and creative ways to raise funds. What started as a $2 million project, sold on various backer pledges and packages, has ballooned out to a massive $300 million goliath supported by spaceships and add-ons that cost thousands thousands of dollars for a single in-game item. Out of over a hundred advertised star systems, not a single one is complete after over three times the advertised development time span. What is also interesting is that the primary focus has been quite clear for some time now, continue to onboard fresh investor capital. This is such a high priority in fact that the game offers a service called War Bonds, where old ships can be turned in and then traded for newer and better ships with a large bonus or discount if new cash is used as well. Alongside this, the game sells elite social club status with insanely priced gimmicks like a digital bottle of whiskey or other meaningless items that are simply used as a mechanism to communicate prestige and try to leverage a social structure within the game for maximum investor revenue. The game relies on a massive and never-ending river of fresh capital, but that capital is not being set to use in any sort of responsible or intelligent way. If that revenue stream were to be cut off, right now, this very day, the game would never be finished, not even close. But at the rate it is going, it could end up being a multi-billion dollar game before it's even close to complete. I can't say with absolute certainty what the future holds for Star Citizen, but as it stands, the game is a bloated, infantile creation that is effectively burning cash in a heap, while hopeful fans keep throwing more onto the blaze. 
But with all that said, I'm not here to just rail against Star Citizen. Instead, I want to focus on why Kickstarter projects, specifically video game ones, are so risky and more often than not fail in a number of different ways. The graveyard of Kickstarter video game projects is very crowded. You have games like Ariel or Ariel, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, a post-apocalyptic adventure that asked for $50,000, made it to $62,000, and was then suspended by Kickstarter for unexplained reasons. Most of the concept art was from the Stalker series, not even from this new proposed game, and it seemed as if the game was a total scam. I strongly suspect Kickstarter agreed with that as well, hence the suspension, but the game sailed past its $50,000 goal with ease. So despite all signs pointing to fraud, people still bought in. No one was charged, thankfully, so in that sense it's a victory, but Ariel or Ariel or whatever is accompanied by dozens, probably hundreds of similar projects that emerge, get funded, and then fail or deliver a complete subpar excuse for what was promised. Ouya, 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 I don't know how to say that either, was an indie game console that raised $8.6 million in funding. But when it came out, the buttons would stick, the whole thing would break after a week or so of playing, and it was largely regarded as an absolute commercial failure. The problems for Ouya, I'll call it that, run far deeper, but that's plenty for a surface level explanation. Anyways, you get the point. Millions of dollars are being funneled into unproven projects, and disappointment is being shat out the opposite end. The reason for this is because more often than not, these projects are not actually prepared to get started. There are certainly exceptions to this, but a lot of the projects on Kickstarter or Indiegogo or whatever else are just flashy concepts. Think E3 and cinematic reveal trailers, you know, the ones that say actual gameplay and then aren't actual gameplay because they are fucking liars. Well, crowdfunded games are a lot like that, but oftentimes even worse. Within a typical publisher-developer relationship, there is a budget laid out and various different positions assigned with the underlying imperative that the developers produce something that the publishers can profit from. Now, there are a whole host of issues that come with this, like insane crunch time development, over-monetization of full-price titles, loot boxes, whatever else, and I've never held back from criticizing these problems, but crowdfunded games are the opposite end of the spectrum, with issues that are just as severe. With a crowdfunded game, the expectation of deadlines doesn't exist. Now, if you enforce deadlines to such an extreme that workers are having mental breakdowns, that's not acceptable. But when you have complete and unrestricted autonomy to delay a project for any reason at all, that is also unacceptable. The reason this freedom exists is because it's not a developer-publisher relationship, it's a developer-backer one, where the backer already gave up their money and really can't do much to exert influence over the developer and motivate them to stick to any deadlines. Even some of the games I personally keep track of on Kickstarter have me very, very nervous for that exact same reason. Crowfall is a game that I've been watching since its very first announcement, and let me tell you, I was hooked. The game is trying to offer a Throne War-style conquest MMO that appears to be truly unique in the space, but for years now, it has been in the pre-alpha stage with no sign of leaving it anytime soon. To be fair, there have been major updates and systems have been redefined, but it appears to be falling into the same cycle as so many other Kickstarter projects where year after year passes and very little gets done. I still believe Crowfall may succeed, I want it to succeed, but I avoided actually backing it financially for this exact reason. If or when the game launches, I will certainly support it, but it's just too risky right now, and by the time it comes out, I may have kids or be dead. What is a game worth to you when it is only finished and playable and really enjoyable 10 years after you paid your money? Another reason why crowdfunded games face severe problems is because of the financial management. I can rail against late stage capitalism when it's almost out of runway and eating itself alive as they strive for bottom line increases that can hardly even happen, but on the flip side, giving millions of dollars to a group of people and then saying, now spend this however you want to make a video game, even though there is literally no framework to ensure you have financial advisors, strategy consultants, or anything at all, is just as bad if not worse. They could spend the entire development budget on pixie sticks that have the game logo on them and no one could say shit about it. But if you try to do that while a major video game publisher is at the reins, well, your career is over to say the very least. This is not to say that successful games do not rise up from the bonfire of Kickstarter, but those success stories are about on par with the number of games in the modern AAA industry landscape that don't resort to predatory monetization. They are two separate ends of the same spectrum, but neither is ideal. The point of this video is to underline that buyers should always be skeptical and careful. Not only buyers, but backers as well, because no matter what platform or format you turn to, success is far from guaranteed. You could run into a game like Star Citizen, where they invest most of the budget into marketing and staff salaries, and then they task the staff with creating material that they can sell and market, 
so that they can get more money to invest in marketing and staff salaries so that they can like blah 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 you get the point around and around in the circle we go a black hole of time and money not all stories of crowdfunded games are as dramatic as Star Citizen, but on a smaller scale, the same thing happens constantly. And the bottom line is that as long as backers support the projects, more will continue to be born. Kickstarter tries to self-regulate to a degree, but it's a losing battle if games and products can just jump onto the platform without a game plan and then fall back on any number of excuses with zero accountability. Successful teams have certainly turned to sites like Kickstarter in the past before and will again in the future, but the most important thing is to vet the team itself before you back something, not the idea. The best idea in the world can be produced by the worst team of workers, and it doesn't matter how good the concept is or how beautiful it looks when done up with concept art, etc., it's still going to end up being shit if the team is bad. In terms of team structure, that will always be an advantage that traditional game development has over crowdfunding. The controlling interests make damn sure to try and put together a team that can do a passable job and get something out in a reasonable time frame. It doesn't always work, lol anthem, but without that oversight, the chances of assembling a competent team and then having that team self regulate time frame accountability as well it doesn't leave me very confident that's it though just be very careful of where you spend your money because kickstarter can be a veritable black hole of time and funds like for instance also certainly don't go to the channel patreon page and make a pledge there or join the youtube membership group for a badge on your comments or whatever else because you basically get nothing for it and i might just run away with the cash and spend it on junk food and beer You've been warned. But that really is it. I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, links down below to support. Thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.